Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. Uh, today we're going to do wastegate controllers and waste gates. Um, spoiler alert, we do have problems. I'll explain that here in just a second. But what I'm doing right now is I'm making a block off for that center uh, single waste gate uh, that we originally that I originally tried to do. Um, and then I was informed that wouldn't work. So uh, I'm making a plug for that. So anyway, here we go. Uh, I did start playing around with uh, just running some air pressure to my wastegates. Um, these things aren't cracking until about 25 PSI with no preload on the spring, uh, assuming that's what that is on these. <laughs> I can't find any information on these wastegates. So moral of the story is I need to take these off here. I need to take one apart. I need to see what they have for springs in them, see if we can't take some springs out. It didn't come with any extra springs or anything. Um, so I can't, I'm gonna have to see if we can take some springs out of it. Um, if I can't, I'm just gonna ditch these things and we're gonna go a different route. There, let's see if it works. I was expecting to be more pressure than that on there. Holy sh All right guys, so I just, did a bunch of research and went on to Max Peating Rods. Max Peating Rods. Anyway, that's who made this kit and who supplies this wastegate. On there, in their directions, they say that this wastegate is a seven and a half to 15 pound wastegate, depending on how you adjust it. All the way loose, it's at 25 pounds. <laughs> so, at, at least 25 pounds. It's not even really cracking at 25. They don't sell any replacement springs for this wastegate. The only place I can ever find this wastegate is in that kit. So, and they don't really have any parts for it. Okay, guys. Um, so I just got back from a store in Spokane called the General Store, and they sell turbo components and that type of stuff there. Uh, pretty handy store. Hopefully they'll keep doing that, but um, unfortunately everyone goes on eBay and Amazon and buys all their stuff there, um, including me on most of the stuff in here. So that, that was not, not really a good thing. Um, so they had some wastegates. Um, they're two different colors, but they're the same wastegate. Um, and these wastegates do come with springs and everything, so we should be able to get these dialed in pretty close. Um, and then while I was there, I bought a TurboSmart wastegate controller, just a manual wastegate controller. Um, the wastegate controllers that came with this kit were terrible, and I don't want to not be able to tune it because we have a, a terrible wastegate controller. Um, and then I went ahead and bought a little bit higher quality, but still a knockoff blow-off valve. Um, but this is significantly higher quality than the, the one that came with that kit. Um, it, at least it appears to be. Um, so we will we will see on that and it should also just bolt right on this will also just bolt right on where this one is So we don't have to modify anything. Um, we should be all good to go Okay, guys, so I still have this thing set at 25 psi You can see how easily that opens so uh, we're definitely going to be closer with this one than that other one so uh, that makes me feel a lot better because uh, I was worried that I was not understanding uh, how these things work uh, with this other one. So um, I am gonna go turn it down and uh, we will see where this thing's actually cracking at. Um, and then I'm also gonna plumb up the gauge so that we can kind of keep an eye on what the line pressure actually is. Okay, I got this thing at 10 PSI now. So I'm gonna see if that opens, it does. I'm gonna double check that we are at 10. Um, of course, we're in bar. I am at exactly, let's see, that's 0 0.5678 and a half. So 0 0.850. So I'll do the math on that. Okay, so that's 12 pounds is 0 0.850 is 12 pounds. So I'm a little over. So we're wide open at 12 pounds. So I'm going to go turn it down. Okay, we are shut and we are at 0.6 bar, which is 8.7. So we're not open at 8.7. Let's see how much force it takes to open it. 
you have to keep in mind there is going to be exhaust pressure yeah there's still quite a bit of resistance there so let's turn it up figure out exactly where these are at okay it's open and we are at 850 again so i need to try to turn it down we're shut almost oh, this is really close we're just under or we're at 0.7 there just under 0.7 and it's starting to open that's 10 pounds so uh, I'm gonna guess that we have 10 pounds spring set up in here right now the way it's at so that's That's pretty good um, That's not what we need uh, But that's pretty good, but I don't want to run 10 psi yet. Um, we are going to go uh, Lighter so we're gonna have to open this up and we will see what springs we have in there And then we'll make a educated guess on the springs to replace it with All right I'm thinking I'm gonna be strong enough to hold this thing shut, but what I'm gonna do is just loosen all these. And uh, I'll determine whether or not that's the case. Oh yeah. Much easier when you don't have a 25 pound spring in it. Now, by a process of elimination, we got to see. I'm going to just do this big one. Uh, this one is actually pretty light. So I'm going to see if that light, lightest of the big diameter springs is enough. It's definitely lighter than the other one. It might be too light, but there's really only one way to find out. Let's put our boost controller in line. I'm going to do it pre gauge. So I'm going to put this on here. Because how you install the TurboSmart boost controller, it just goes in line. Um, and it'll be a little different for our twin turbos, but uh, normally you wouldn't have a gauge in between there, but we're doing that just so that I can kind of see. So we have 10 PSI right now. I'm going to increase, well, I'm going to decrease boost so that that wastegate starts opening. And is it opening? It is. So it is open. Whew. We are at 0.325. See if I can bleed off enough. So we should be, this spring should work with this boost controller. I'm guessing because I'm bleeding off all of that 10 pounds and I have a ton of room left. I think, I think that's gonna work. I think that's how we're gonna start it. Um, if we end up having to change the springs, we can do that. That's not that big of a deal, but that should get us within range. Um, let's see real quick what 0.3 bar is. So that's four, a little over four pounds. Um, so we got four pounds and we'll be able to go up beyond 10 because we have 10 PSI coming in right now. Um, and I'm able to resist that, resist this from opening with this boost controller easily. Uh, and then have more. So this should be good to go. Um, we do have to keep in mind that the exhaust is also going to be pushing on this. Um, so even though right now we're at our point, what are we at? A little, about point three right now. It's pretty easy to open this manually, but if we were to turn our gauge, it's, it, it then has quite a bit of power to resist. So I think, I think this is gonna be pretty close. But I'm totally guessing, so we will see. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to explain this a little better. You can see this is open right now, um, and that's because I have this down all the way. 
Um, that means I have 10 PSI going through this whole system because basically this is closed, which just means all the pressure is going through the system. All this weight boost controller does is bleeds off pressure. So we'll still have 10 coming in, but it'll bleed off pressure simulating that we have bigger springs in our wastegate, if that makes sense. So there we closed it. So we know now that this, because of our testing earlier, that this, this valve opens at around four PSI. So that's, that's good. That puts us below the range number that we need to hit. And we know that with this boost controller, I can turn it up beyond 10 PSI, which is higher than I need to go. So this should get us within range on our turbo system. Um, I don't believe we'll hear that while it's running, I hope, <laughs> but it will make that noise under high boost. Uh, probably not that, that much noise because we're never gonna run 10 PSI. But, but anyway, so that, that's kind of in a, in a nutshell how, how this, this turbo smart uh, wastegate controller works. Um, you're, you're, it's a, essentially simulating springs on here. So if you had these springs completely dialed in exactly where you wanted them, you wouldn't need a wastegate controller at all. Um, you would just hook this line directly to the uh, pressure side of your turbo system and you wouldn't need a wastegate controller um, because it would automatically work at the pressure you needed it to work at. Um, but this is going to allow us to tune this thing you know, if, if we're not making quite enough pressure, we can just neep, turn up a little bit of pressure and then uh, tune, dyno tune again, uh, and then we'll get it dialed into exactly where we want it. Try to hit our 400 horse at less than eight PSI. So that's the goal. Um, okay, so when we go to install this for real, you only use one turbo controller for both of the wastegates. And I'll put a picture up so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but the only thing you really have to watch for on that is you're only taking one pressure line and it's going to be the pressure line after your two turbos uh, combine, hopefully. Um, but anywhere anywhere in the charge system pre-throttle body uh, would work. Um, I, I'm gonna do mine on the second turbo in the system, second turbo down in the system. Um, that's how I'm going to get my, that's where I'm gonna get my pressure from. So anyway, this is a good setup. So now let's take part the other one, get the other spring in. We'll check it, make sure it opens at the same pressure. Um, and we'll actually tee these and, and watch them and hopefully they'll open simultaneously. All right, so those are working out just perfectly. That's, uh, I'm pretty impressed. These are uh, technically knockoff blow-off valves, or I keep saying that, wastegate, that wastegates. Um, they are knockoffs, but uh, they seem to be pretty consistent. Those, those are both working uh, almost identical. You could barely see the difference between the two. And I was opening and closing that really slow to try to make sure that the that they were staying about the same distance open of each other. So that's going to work out pretty good. Um, so I'm going to put them on. I, I did make that little baffle thing. Um, it's it's literally just a deflectors to keep the exhaust from hitting the, hitting the uh, charge line on that side so we don't heat it up more than we need to. Um, I'm going to run these things. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually get this done, uh, but I will get this all done this weekend. So hopefully on Monday, I should be able to have this thing running. Uh, so there should be a video on it running. Um, and then once I am convinced that we're good to go, um, I'll make an appointment with Dino. And so the episode after Monday will be Dino tuning. So thanks for watching. We will see you again on Monday.